top 10 most shocking facts about surgery. Anesthesia was initially unpopular and even banned in some places. It's hard to imagine, but in a lot of human history, surgeries were done completely with no anesthesia whatsoever. Things like medicinal plants or alcohol were used, but it's hard to imagine chopping your leg off with an ax and having the alcohol numb that pain. Hmm, they felt it. Especially in the US when some surgeons used to say, if it doesn't hurt, it's not surgery. What? <laughs> Yeah. That is crazy. And other people thought it was satanic influence. Anesthesia was also pretty high risk and a lot of people died just from getting the anesthesia. A lot of times from overdose. You see, we really didn't know what we were doing back in the day. And also back in the day, a lot of times it was a surgeon administering the anesthesia and also doing surgery. You can't pay attention to both things. So people just died. It wasn't great. Don't worry, anesthesia is very safe today for most people. So you might be awake for brain surgery. Some brain surgeries actually require the patient to be awake. This allows a surgical team to monitor the brain in real time. This way we can ensure that we don't damage the critical areas. And there are actually several videos trending online with somebody playing the violin as they're getting brain surgery. Now don't worry, it's not painful. The brain tissue itself doesn't have any pain receptors. And the interesting part is that even though you're awake playing the violin, you might not even remember it happening afterwards because of the medication that we give you. Nuts. Yeah. Kind of crazy. Did you know that surgical procedures date back to ancient times? Some of the first evidence of surgery was trephination, which is drilling a hole in the skull. And this was found as early as the Mesolithic period, which is 6000 BC. Wow. Skulls with this surgery were found in North Africa, Ukraine, and Portugal. You know, do you think you're a descendant of the first brain surgery patient? No wonder I'm so smart. <laughs> Wait, you mean giving the surgery or receiving the surgery? Mm, you seem like you received it. It was Ukrainian. I think there's no holes in my brain though, last time I checked. The first successful organ transplant was 70 years ago. The first successful kidney transplant surgery was performed in 1954. The donor and the recipient were actually identical twins, reducing the risk of rejection. But here's the real kicker. Before 1980s, there really weren't a lot of transplants because we were so afraid of rejection. And now we have a lot of great medications to keep those at bay and also better matching process to align the body to the right donor. The fact that organ transplants are relatively new blows my mind. Because <laughs> we do so many yeah. all the time. We do dozens in our hospital every day. Maybe you, not so much me. You don't transplant feet? Not yet. What about toenails? Not yet. <laughs> Speaking of kidneys, a random fact. When someone receives a kidney, they do not swap out the new kidney for the old one. In fact, they put the new one on, they suture it in, and then they leave the old one in place. So people that have had a kidney transplant Plant actually have three kidneys, technically. It's true. There is such a thing as non-invasive brain surgery, which means there's no incision in the skull or the brain at all. This is often accomplished by going through the blood vessel in your groin all the way up into your brain and doing the surgery through the blood vessel. It's crazy, but it happens all the time. This is actually exactly how we fix strokes and embolize aneurysms or boil them, basically stop them from bursting. This is crazy, but some people have performed surgery on themselves. It's very rare, but sometimes in a desperate circumstance, people have had to give themselves appendectomies, remove their appendix, or amputations. Most famously, a Russian physician had to remove his own appendix when he was at an Antarctic mission in 1961 because he was the only doctor there. Rigazov worked for an hour and 45 minutes to remove his appendix. That's a long time for an appendectomy, right? Wow, yeah. Sometimes these can be done in under five minutes. Actually, the fastest appendectomy has been done in 46 seconds. Seconds. Now, because appendix infections are so common, surgeons that winter in Antarctica and they're the only surgeon around, they actually have to get their appendix removed before they even travel there. 
Would you sacrifice your appendix to work in the freezing cold by yourself with no other surgeons around? Oh, you really sell it. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it, but I like the beach. During a lot of very routine surgeries, you're actually on life support, which means the anesthesiologist is actively keeping you alive for the procedure. You see, when you get anesthesia, often you stop breathing, your blood pressure drops, your heart isn't beating as well. So we have to do all those things for you. We have to breathe for you, keep your heart beating, keep your blood pressure good, not too high, not too low, and we're virtually responsible for all major bodily functions. So can I pat myself on the back now? Yeah, thank you anesthesiologist okay. guys. Surgeons get all the credit. It can be a stressful job, especially when the patient's not doing well. What they say about anesthesia is it's boredom mixed with moments of sheer terror. For example, let's say you give somebody anesthesia, they're no longer breathing, and you can't breathe for them. You can't get the breathing tube in. I mean, that right there is life or death. Anyway, very scary, very, very scary. Plastic surgery has ancient roots. Skin grafting was done as early as 600 BC. Wow. However, arguably some of the biggest advancements in modern time is due to World War I and II, surprisingly. And the reason is before this, most facial injuries were caused by small firearms and swords. But weapons used in World War I were heavy artillery and gas, and they caused severe facial deformities in a lot of soldiers. So huge advances were made in reconstructing the faces of injured men during this time. So we all know the placebo effect is when a person's physical or mental health improve after a placebo or a dummy treatment. Did you know that research has found that placebo is even effective for surgical procedures? Many studies have found that patients improve after being told they had a surgery that didn't actually happen. Who would do that? This study. <laughs> For example, in one study, a group of placebo patients were told they had a knee arthroscopy, and surprisingly, a lot of them improved. This is not routinely done though. How much do they charge for that? A lot. I bet you the bill was still six figures. <laughs> American healthcare, charge for everything. Okay. Charge for everything. Just nickel and dime, everybody. Oh my goodness. See, anesthesiologists don't do that. Surgeons. You, you can't surgeons. do placebo anesthesia. No, no, no. Surgeons. Blame them. Getting anesthesia doesn't mean you're asleep. That's right. For certain eye procedures, for example, like cataract extractions, you're actually awake, but we still give you some anesthesia. And I'd like to give example of my father who had a cataract removed recently. He's the kind of guy you would not ever touch his eye. Nobody would ever touch his eye. He would not let anybody touch his eye, but a little bit of medicine through the IV and he was like, meh, all right, do whatever you need. And that is because anesthesia is a spectrum with a little bit of anesthesia, the anxiety completely goes away and you can be awake following commands, but not care about it at all, even if you're getting surgery. Also, we can block nerves going to different parts of the body, which means you can get a lot of surgeries like a whole knee replacement, completely awake, watching the whole thing. Obviously, a lot of people don't want to do that, but you can. And here's the last bonus fact. In 2015, a very, very first penis transplant was successful in South Africa and it restored patients' reproductive and urinary abilities. Well, that's a wrap, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe <laughs> the video and let us know in the comments what we should do next time. Bye. See you later.